Hello everyone. So you pull up to your house at the appointment time and of course your home is on the wrong side of the road that you're shooting. The sun is behind the home so it is backlit. Therefore the front of the home is a complete shadow and the house is casting a shadow into the yard. A wonderful scenario. This actually happens a lot, especially on cloudless days. All right, so how do we tackle this? The first thing that I do is I do bracketing photos the way I've shown you before on my other external uh, shots of a house video. I'm going to use bracketing to take my photos, but I'm also going to go back and go into single shot mode and use my flash and walk up and down the house using my remote trigger so I can trigger the, uh, the camera to, to go off which also makes the flash go off. And I'm gonna light from one end of the house to the other. And when I get back to Photoshop, I'm going to blend those in. Now, when I'm using my flash on the outside of a home, my settings are usually ISO 100 and the shutter speed, I'm gonna have it at about 160th of a second because of sync speed with the flash. And my S-stop is 7.1. So now that I've taken the photos, let's go into Adobe Raw and Photoshop and work on the photos. Now that we're in Adobe Raw, first thing I'm going to do is go over here to the right and apply Tony's presets. I'm going to apply my preset to all the photos, and that's mostly um, things like uh, lens correction. It's a uh, Dis, um, for the distortion. It's also going to handle noise, things like that. I go over all my settings on my presets on my videos on YouTube. I think it's either video one or two, episode one or two. So now that I've got those presets applied to all these photos, I'm going to come down here to the right and open all the images in Photoshop so I can blend those together. Okay, now that we're in Photoshop, the next thing I'm going to do is go over here to my actions. And I've shown you this before in either episode one or two, and that is where I sharpen all my photos. I'm going to hit sharp, file, automate, batch, make sure that the source is all the open files. Okay, and that applies my sharpening to all the photos. Now, let's go to photo one. This is, I snagged two of the bracketed images. I snagged the one where the exposure is correct for the yard and the background and the trees, things like that. And then I also snagged one where the front of the home was lit somewhat, but notice we've lost a lot of detail in the background and the foreground. Now, here is a flashed shot, all right? And that, you can actually see my flash there to the right. I'm flashing the middle of the home. Look at the difference between the, the, the middle of the home on this shot and the one with ambient bracketed. So let me teeter between those. See where the one with the flash just makes the home pop. Then here is another flash shot where I'm getting the door area. The next one I'm getting the left side of the house, right? The next one I'm getting sort of to the other side of the house in this area over here. And last one is getting the top part of the home. What do we do next? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with the flashed images. So I'm gonna go ahead and command, this. it's control on a PC, command on a Mac, command A, command C, which selects the whole image, copies it, go to my next photo, command V. So let me teeter between these two photos. So this one is getting the middle area. The next shot is getting over here a little bit to the left. So what I'm gonna do is make a mask. It's a white mask. So I'm going to use a brush and brush in black to reveal underneath. Go to 100% opacity and brush in that next portion of the home that the flash was used on. Now I don't wanna use it over here. <laughs> I just want to bring in that picture underneath what I did point the flash at. Combine these two images, all right? Control, or excuse me, Command A, Command C, go to the next picture, Command V, all right? 
I also need to get rid of this flash. So go, let me go ahead and make another uh, mask. 100% going with black. I'm going to get rid of my flash there before I forget. All right, let's teeter back and forth. Okay, so this is the left-hand side of the house. All right, starting about right here. So let me brush that in. Get a little bit of the yard as well. All right, very good. Combine these two. Again, Command A, Command C, go to my next photo, which is that far side of the home. Let's teeter back and forth, see what part of it we want to get. All right, keep in mind this one thing I do see. Right here by this tree, look what happens. See that shadow? All right, so I got to keep that in mind as I'm blending this in. All right, so let's go ahead and make our mask. And for right now, I'll go with 100 and get this side here. I'm going to gently brush that in. Try not to get that uh, shadow in from that tree. Brighten up this part over here. Okay, merge these two. Same thing again. Command A, Command C. Go to this last image, V. All right, so what's different here? Let's teeter back and forth. See the top of the home? Top of the home is different. So let me go ahead and make a mask. 100% opacity, painting with black, and get the top of this home. All right. All right, so let's combine these. Not done yet. Okay, so we got the front of the home looking halfway decent. Let's compare. This is photo seven. Let's compare this with the ambient only shot. All right, so there's the ambient flash. Ambient flash. Big difference. This is why you need to learn how to use flash on homes. Okay, what I'm going to do now is... Again, Command A, Command C, and Command V on which image? This image. Why this image? Because everything looks good in the background. The roof looks good. The grass looks good. Control V. All right. So what I'm going to do is make a mask, and I am going to paint in the background. Now, when I'm around the trees, I always use 100% opacity. And the reason being is, well, let me just demonstrate that. Let me go to... Uh, 50%. All right. And what you'll notice there is it's blurring. Okay. Why is it blurring? Because the wind's blowing. So the tree was in a different position um, this uh, on this shot than it was the previous shot. So I just go straight to 100%. And I want to paint that in. That way your trees and everything are not all blurred out and weird looking. All right. So let's get uh, everything looking really good here. Over here. All right. These bushes. And let's get some. I'm going to knock this because the grass isn't that bad to about 74. And bring in the uh, grass to where it looks fairly decent and not so faded right and then the driveway as well try not to get into that shaded region because that'll just make it darker all right all right so now what all right that's looking pretty good now I'm going to combine those two images and next thing I want to do is bring in a decent sky so that's our next thing. Okay, now I have imported a drone shot that I did right around my house out in the country. And I am going to select this sky photo and bring it over here to our house. Control V. Control T or Command T. And I'm going to size this up with the house. Whoops. All right, and once I, let me control T and move that around just a little bit more. That should be good. Enter. All right, so now I'm going to duplicate the background layer where I'm sandwiching the sky shot. All right, going to make a mask. Going to get my magic wand tool. And I'm going to set, set my tolerance to maybe 25 
Actually, let's just leave it at 20. All right, select the sky. All right, got some of it. Remember, I darkened part of the parts of it, so it's a little bit different shades. Hold down the shift key, control again. Um, let's get some of this darker blue, shift, hold again. All right, and this blue area here, shift, hold again. What I'm getting are all the different shades of the sky, all right? Now, what I'm gonna do is grab the brush, make this a lot bigger, and I'm gonna turn the opacity to 100%, <clears throat> paint in the uh, sky, all right? So we got the sky painted in. All right, but what about in between the trees and all the branches and all that stuff? Go up and hit the, re and the reason I don't do the step before now is because sometimes it selects part of the house. Now that I got all the close areas to the home done, select similar. And what that's doing is, remember all those selections we made of the sky, all those different colors? I am saying now I want you to select any color similar to the ones we selected. All right, now by doing this, watch when I do the trees now. All right, so let's get, uh, notice it did get sections of the house, so I do have to be careful. All right, so we're getting all the trees. Go over here beside the house, paint that in all there in the trees. Way over here, there's some areas it didn't select. I'll fix that in a minute. All right, now I'm gonna hit uh, Command or Control D to deselect. All right, I knew there was an area here that didn't work, so let me brush that in. All right, and there's some areas up here that it didn't get very well. So I can either go back in and select it and then hit Select Similar again and try again in that area, which seemed to work just fine. All right, Command D. All right, now what I wanna do is select the sky layer, go to Adjustments, go to Brightness, and let's bring in that sky exactly the way we want it, meaning this looks terrible, so let's brighten it up. That looks believable. Now I'm gonna take the contrast slider and bring it to the left just because it brings back some of the, the contrast in the clouds, makes it look, again, more believable. Let's play with the brightness a little bit again. So somewhere like that. Now we got all these layers. Let's right click, flatten the image. Now, next thing I'm gonna do, if anything, but I do wanna do this because I can see it needs it, is I wanna go back into Adobe Raw and I wanna play with the colors a little bit, make some vibrancy and some other things pop on this photo. So we'll go into Adobe Raw next. Okay, back in Adobe Raw. First thing I'm gonna do is take the Vibrant slider and slide it up a little bit. <laughs> that really did the sky too much. All right, actually I'm gonna double click out of that. Grab my brush tool, turn up the saturation, and only paint it on maybe the grass to give it more pop. It looks a little lifeless because it's uh, November, put it on some of the trees, make them pop a little bit more. Yeah, I think that worked out. Actually, I'm gonna do it in the shaded parts as well. Remember, we're painting right now with saturation. And let me, since we painted that, let me try changing the temperature here, just to show you extremes. Let me play with the temperature just a little bit to give it a little bit more life. There we go. Notice what I'm doing, the reason I'm doing that separately instead of making it affect the whole photo is I don't wanna mess up the sky, all right? So now I'm gonna to go to a new adjustment brush and I'm actually going to paint a little bit of yellow into the sky and a little bit of green because the sky has a little bit of a magenta tint, tint, and it's a little too blue for my liking. Again, skies are always different, but I like it like this. All right, and now for the home, I might grab another brush, paint with a little bit of yellow into the home, just to make it look like it's in the sun, just a tad probably won't even notice much of a difference, but there is. 
All right, now I'm at 124% zoomed in. Let me zoom that in at MLS size, all right? This is about the size that it'll be on MLS, and there you go, a perfectly presentable photo in some of the worst conditions. Thank you.